Good afternoon and uh, thank you for joining us. As those of you who have been with us throughout the day, um, we thank you. We've been on since 10 o'clock this morning with presentations on the hour throughout from 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and we've had excellent presentations. Right now, we're going to um, roll up to story time. I would like to introduce Stephanie Duff, who is the author of Me and My Hair. This is the first book in the RAIN series project, in the, uh, the RAIN project series. And this book actually is available locally if you are in Brampton or near Brampton. There's a, a bookstore called Knowledge Bookstore, and they are still open. They uh, do curbside pickup, et cetera. And this book is there ready for you. So if you've enjoyed this story, please, I encourage you to go to Knowledge Bookstore. Um, she is a passionate teacher in the Peel District School Board who's been teaching children for over 10 years. She received her Bachelor's of Education from York University and her Master's of Education um, from U of T. Stephanie is committed to four things, maximizing learning in any space, promoting a healthy sense of self, and is inspiring leadership and fostering critical thinking. I love how she's even um, composed this book. If you see at the back of the book, it really does promote critical thinking in, in our children, which is amazing. She has dedicated her career to each of these pursuits. So to no further ado, I do present Stephanie and she will um, be reading Me and My Hair. Hi, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. My name is Stephanie Duff, as Marsha had mentioned, and I'm so happy to be here and share my story with you called Me and My Hair, which is about a young black girl who kind of has to navigate between loving her hair and not loving her hair or conforming to what everybody else or what everyone else looks like. So let's dive into the story, and I do hope you enjoy. Me and my hair. Ring, 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 my alarm clock jolted me out of my sleep. I swung my hand to turn it off and suddenly felt knots in the pit of my stomach. I was nervous. It was my first day at my new school and I didn't know what to expect. Will I make friends? Will my teacher be nice? After convincing myself, it will be a good day. I finally made it out of bed, had a shower, brushed my teeth, and got dressed. Just then, my mom called from downstairs. Rain, breakfast is ready. Hurry up or you'll be late for your first day. Coming, mom, I replied. I took off my satin bonnet slowly and smiled as I looked at my new hairstyle mom did last night. I always get a new hairstyle before the first day of school. It is the best part of going back to school. Perfect, I said to myself as I went downstairs for breakfast. And there's Rain getting up. She has her satin bonnet on. For those of you that may not know, a satin bonnet is often used in our Black community by young Black girls and Black women to help keep moisture in our hair. And there she is getting ready. Rain, are you nervous about your first day, Dad asked. A little bit, I said, as I fin hurried to finish my oatmeal. Well, remember what we always say. You are smart, you are beautiful, and you can overcome anything. I know, Dad, I said as I began to run for the school bus. So when I got on the school bus, I found an empty seat and stared out the window and began to think about what my day would be like. And there she is. Just then, I heard some kids whispering, and when I turned around, I saw them pointing in my direction. They weren't laughing at me, were they? I wondered if anything was on my face or my clothes, but as I looked at my reflection in the window, everything was the same as it was when I left home. They continued to whisper, and I continued to look out the window thinking, what are they laughing at? When I got off the bus, I heard a girl say, look at her hair, and another say, it looks so weird. I wanted to say something, but no words came out of my mouth. I got to class and all I could think about was what those other kids said. Is this what they were laughing at on the bus? My hair? I've always loved, I've always loved when my mom did my hair in Bantu knots. She always said it brought out my beautiful smile and my bright eyes. Well, right now, 
I have no smile and my eyes, they're not very bright. So there they are on the bus. And a common hairstyle for those that may not know um, is Bantu knots, which is basically little buns that are parted on top of the head and then fastened either with elastics or a little pin, depending. When I got home, my parents asked, how was your first day? It was good, the teachers were nice. I managed to blurt out before bolting to my room. I did not feel like talking about my day. It was horrible and I just wanted to be alone. Tomorrow will be a better day, I thought. I don't know, we'll see. There she is. But it did not get better, it got worse. I was sitting at my desk and I could hear other kids chuckling behind me. One girl even tried to touch my hair. I heard them say, what is going on with her hair? Is it supposed to look like that? Why is it sticking up like that? I wanted to say something, but my lips became heavy and I could feel, feel tears filling up in my eyes. I said nothing. There she is. Oftentimes when kids are being teased, they don't say anything at all. This happened every day and for the first time in my life, I hated my hair. Every coil and every curl suddenly became my biggest enemy. I need to fix this, I thought to myself. So I started to think about different things that I could do. So in this one, you see she's thinking about cutting it all off. And over here, we see she's thinking about putting on a hat, but with a nice big afro like that, a simple cap just won't do it. I know what to do. I watched my mom and sister use the flat iron on their hair to make it straight. Now it's my turn. If I make my hair straight, it will look like everyone else and nobody will bug me about my hair anymore. When I got home, I quickly ran to the bathroom and plugged in that flat iron. And just as I was about to pass it through my hair, the bathroom door swung open. And so here's Rain thinking about straightening her hair with a flat iron. And for those that may not know, when you have a big afro like this, it's tiny, tiny curly coils that make up that afro. And so when a flat iron goes into those tresses, it becomes straight. It straightens out all the curls. And you can see here how she's imagining her hair straight. Rain, what are you doing? My sister Candace yelled as she grabbed the flat iron out of my hand. I don't like my hair anymore, I cried. The kids at school keep teasing me. I want hair like theirs because it's long and beautiful and I'm sure nobody laughs at them. Rain, straightening your hair is not going to solve your problem, but I know what will. Okay, well, what will solve my problem? I said eagerly. I think it's time you take a trip to the hair salon. You will find your answer there, Candace replied. So on Sunday afternoon, mom and I headed to the salon. I can't wait to get there. How much longer, I shouted from the back seat. Oh, we're almost there, mom replied. I know Candace told mom about me wanting to straighten my hair, but she didn't say anything to me yet. So I looked out the window as she pulled up to the salon and the name on the outside read, Maxine's Tresses. I opened the door and all I heard was loud talking and laughter. I looked at one side and saw a woman with rollers in her hair. And on the other side, there was a girl getting her hair braided. On my other side, two women sat under the dryer talking and reading magazines. And here we are in the hair salon. One girl has her rollers set in. Another one's getting extensions, which is when we add extra hair into the hair. It's like a protective style. And there's the other girls there. Hi, Rain, come sit over here in Auntie Maxine's chair, said a tall woman with sister locks in her hair. I hopped in the chair and began to tell her what I wanted. Please make it straight, Auntie Maxine. Well, she's not really my auntie, but I know not to call adults by their first name. It is either Miss, Mr., Auntie, or Uncle. Anything else would get me in big trouble. So why do you want it straight, she asked, as she slowly and gently examined every curl. I told her about the kids at school and how much I hated my hair. But as I continued to explain or complain, Auntie Maxine did not say anything. All she did was give me a book with pictures of other black girls with beautiful hairstyles. 
Some hairstyles were up, some were down, some were twisted and braided, had pus, and so much more. There were different hairstyles, but all the girls had hair like mine. And here's what she saw. Girls with twists and braids and buns and cornrows. All different types of hairstyles, but all just like hers. I looked up at Auntie Maxine and said, I didn't know hair like mine could look so beautiful. She stooped down and looked me in my eyes and said, your hair is beautiful, just the way it is, Rain. And don't let other kids tell you different. Changing it because of what people say is not the right thing to do. If you care too much about what everyone thinks of you, before you know it, you will change everything about you. So first take time to learn and love your hair, just the way it is. Oh, you're right, I said happily. I'm going to love my hair just the way it is and tell others to do the same. So I pointed to the hairstyle I wanted and about three hours later, which is about how long you stay in a hair salon, I was on my way home with a new hairstyle. There she is, talking to her Auntie Maxine and leaving with this brand new cornrow hairstyle. So how did you like the hair salon? Did you learn anything new, Mom asked? I loved the hair salon and I love my hair. I learned that I may not have hair like everyone else and that's okay. I don't need to change who I am just to be like everyone else. We're all made different and we are all beautiful, just like you and dad always tell me. Mom smiled and repeated, yes, we are all beautiful. But then she pulled the car over and turned to look back at me and said softly, Rain, the next time something is bothering you, it is important that you talk to us about it so we can solve it together. Yes, mom, I said. So on Monday, I saw kids laughing at my hair again. But this time, instead of feeling sad about it, I walked over to them and boldly said, why are you laughing at my hair? They looked at, they looked at each other and said, because it looks so weird. It's not weird, it's just different. And different is not bad. Everyone in this school has different hair. So to one of the girls, I said, I like your hair because it's a beautiful red. And I turned to the other girl and said, and your hair, it has nice loose curls. See, we can each, we can each like each other's differences instead of laughing at them. And that's the end of the story. So we can see how Rain started off loving her hair, loved her hairstyle in the beginning, but in the middle, because of what voices were saying, what people were saying, we realized how she became, you know, not so confident in how she looked and who she was. But because of her community, because of those around her, her sister, her mom, her hair, her hairstylist, Auntie Maxine, all of them gave her back her voice. All of them gave her back that ability to stand up for herself and oftentimes you know one of the the main things of the book is that oftentimes we do need our community oftentimes we do need other people to kind of pour into us and empower us and remind us who we are and even at a young age you'd be surprised young people young children need that type of voice um in this case it's a young black girl which is what the rain project really focuses on but the the tools and the messaging is for all children all children um that are dealing either with bullying or um, feeling confident in their own uniqueness and differences. Uh, it's super important that they have, I believe, tools like books, um, movies, uh, cartoons, anything that can be able to speak to and empower, um, you know, young black children, but even more specifically, uh, you know, children overall. Um, and M Marcia had mentioned about the back of the book where I thought it was really important to um, help either teachers or facilitators, parents um, that may not know what to say or how to do it um, with some questions that they can be able to have that conversation with their child. So for example, in the back of the book, one of the themes that I highlighted is acceptance. Um, what does that look like? What are some questions that we can ask to help your, your child um, or in, in teachers' cases, students um, build that self-confidence piece and build that acceptance piece? So one question would sound like, um, is there a time where you felt that you had to change yourself for others to like you, which is something that's commonly happened either in elementary school, in high school, and, you know, even some adults find themselves in that situation as well. And then, you know, the, 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 the question that comes after that would be, what did you think you had to change and what was that experience like? And oftentimes, if we don't have the conversations with our children or with students, they won't necessarily speak up. But if we ask the right questions, um, it will help to support those students or those your children um, 
um, through certain things that they're dealing with that they may not have the words to articulate. And so, you know, my goal again was not only just to create uh, a picture book that, you know, you can read and say, you know, have a great night, have a good sleep. But now it's it's taking it a step further to say, you know, how did you feel about that? Have you ever felt like that before? How did you think Rain solved the problem? Do you think you could solve the problem like that? Do you have a better way that you could solve it? Um, and so just really um, allowing uh, facilitators, teachers, parents uh, to be able to have those conversations and help students or children to navigate through some of the difficult times that they experience. Because it bullying is a big deal. Um, and dealing with situations of diversity and differences and race and culture is also a big deal. And giving the students words, giving your child words is super important. So I really hope you enjoyed the book. I hope you, um, you know, got a little nugget to walk away with. And again, like uh, Marsha had mentioned, the book is available at Knowledge Bookstore, which is here in Brampton. And you can more, you're more than welcome to purchase a copy or two um, for your family, friends or whomever. OK, so thanks again. Okay, um, I know that I had um, put in the chat, but sometimes people may not have heard. Um, if you have any questions of the author, please feel free to type them in the Q&A. But at this point, there may not be. You did such an awesome job reading. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, and, and we're so thorough that maybe there's, there's no questions because, because you were very thorough. Sometimes even... Um, when we think about edu the education week is going to begin next week and we start to think about careers and so forth. And sometimes people may even wonder, how do you become an author? And um, sometimes we think like, oh, it's it's this really daunting task. Um, so Stephanie, can you tell us how did you become an author? That's a good question. So. Um... <laughs> It's a it, it's a long story, but I'll give you the short version. Um, it's a long story, but initially I never wanted to become an author. It wasn't something I was dreaming about. I wasn't thinking about it as a young girl that, hey, I want to be an author and write many, many books. Um, but I saw, you know, I saw a need in um, my community specifically when it comes to young black girls and even thinking of myself as a young black girl and the struggle that I had with my hair in high school and what am I going to do with it? I don't like it. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I have no hairstyles and that sort of thing, um, which is what kind of spawned this book. But to become an author, um, it's not as far fetched as one may think it is right? It starts off with your imagination, starts off with an idea. Do you have a message that you want to get out there? Do you have something that you want to share with the world, share with a, a community, um, share with whomever? Um, and do you want to put it in storybook form or, you know, novel form for young adults or, you know, a textbook form, whatever that may look like for you. But it really starts with, do you have an idea? Do you have um, a thought about something that you want to share with the world? Then after that, it's getting it on paper. And I think that that may be the hardest part is taking all your wonderful ideas that are sitting up in your mind and getting it on paper. For me, that took four months of just like building the confidence enough to write it on paper. Um, but after getting it on paper and your mojo starts going and you're feeling what you're writing and things like that, um, you, you, you get it on paper and you get people to look over it for you that you think would be able to give you an unbiased, um, uh, you know, uh, feedback. Uh, and then find a few editors, whether it be online through Fiverr or someone you may know, um, getting, you know, university students that are into um, English that you might be able to pay for and help you to edit your work. Um, and then fast forward, you find a publishing house. For me, I found a publishing house. They are located in the States, but for some, they might not even use a publishing house because the beauty of the internet allows you to publish everything on your own and you could sell it from the front of your house if you really wanted to. Um, and it just depends on what your reach, what, what you want your reach to look like. But initially, I feel that the most challenging part would be um, coming up, getting that idea onto the paper and then being able to, um, you know, finance it. Uh, and that that sort of piece might be of a challenge. But outside of that, it's just locating the publishing house. Maybe you want to do um, illustrators and, 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 and finding illustrators for me. Um, my sister's fiance is the one who connected me to the illustrators. One of the big things for me in this book is that I wanted to highlight hair, but I didn't want it just to be, oh, 
this is what hair looks like. I wanted it to be so defined. I wanted you to see the extensions. I wanted you to see the curls. I wanted you to see the fro. And so these particular illustrators are actually located in Nigeria, which is where my sister's fiance is from. And um, it was a group of them that were able to bring what I had in my head to light. I'm not an illustrator, but again, it's a team effort, right? And so based on what you want, you'll search it out, research it and uh, bring it forth. And so the total amount of time for me to put this into action was about 10 months um, in total, getting past that hump of, I don't know what I'm gonna write, um, but it, it took a total of 10 months or so to kind of get it out there and, and get the publishing house. And so don't think of it as, this isn't for me, I don't know how to do it, it's too far-fetched, only certain people do it, that is far from the truth. There's not only certain people that do it. If you have a message, if you have something you wanna share and you wanna put it to paper, it's getting past that first hump of getting it on paper, but after that, with a little bit of motivation and support, you can definitely get it done. Thank you, Stephanie. And and that's also a good example of, of uh, collaboration. And, and many books are a very collaborative pro process, especially right. when we have like author and illustrator and so forth. And you're never too young. Um, as a teacher, uh, I had my class of grade eights actually become published. We published a book of poetry, I am from, um, and, and again, um, I just had a class that were a bunch of great writers and I thought like, yeah, no, their, no. their writing needs to be published. And then we got other, other classes in Peel to also contribute. And, and now that book is out there. I am from, so they're published authors. They are actually authors and their work is published. Um, and, and they, they sold the books, the books actually, they, they weren't oh. free, right. And so the money went back to um, helping our newcomers. At, at that time, we, we had a lot of um, newcomers coming in from um, a certain region and there was a need to, to provide supports. And so um, they were able to get backpacks to the um, We Welcome the World Center with school supplies and stuff from the proceeds of what they did. So, you know, parents, you might see that you have kids with talents yes. and you might say, I just wanna encourage them to, you know, put pen to paper and, and I see that. And I'm just gonna put in the chat, there's a couple of things. Um, if you are a parent of adolescent, like middle school or high school, there's something called Teen, teen Inc. And, and, and so young people internationally actually, um, they, they post their works on Teen Inc. Um, from all over the world. And that's one way of being published online um, in a positive way. And they have different categories and so forth. And then another one that you might even have read when you were a kid is Chickadee Magazine. And yeah, Chickadee yeah. Magazine always is publishing um, young people's work. So if you have an aspiring author, please <laughs> encourage them. Encourage them to, to, to use those sites or, or to take the route that Stephanie took. You don't have to be in a, a formal Chickadee thing. You could actually be a published author um, at whatever age. You know, you've got eight-year-olds writing books these days. So um, thank you for sharing your journey and encouraging our kids to perhaps start their own journeys. Um, thank you, Stephanie. That book was amazing. The reading was amazing. Um, the symposium is is and is winding down. If you did want to still listen to things about scholarships, if you look at your flyer, that, that workshop is continuing to 4 p.m. So you can maybe sneak in and, and do that. Or if you just want to get your groove on, Afoe Groove is, is moving as well right now. Um, I just think by the name Afoe Groove, I can only imagine how much fun they're, how much fun they're having in there. So, um, and if not, just get out there and enjoy a beautiful Saturday. Thank you for engaging in our first um, sim parent symposium, Excellence in Education. I hope that people who have joined us today have um, had some uh, a great tidbits to take away. The sessions are recorded, so they will be going out to um, our, our various schools so that they can share with their parent community so that you can watch it again. Or if you know friends who weren't able to attend but wanted to, these sessions are recorded. All right, take care. Thank you.